So oh, hello everyone, welcome to Spentan Learning Platform. And today we are moving ahead with the combinational circuits. And in this video, we will be going to discuss encoders and decoders. Already in the previous video, we have discussed adders and subtractors. And today we will be wrapping up combinational circuits with the encoders and decoders. So let's go ahead and would know the detail structure of encoder and decoder, right? So here I'm your instructor Pudin Versus, the founder of Spenton, Dr. Royd, Intuition Front, and many more other platforms, and the ex-president at VLSI Club. So let's move to the main agenda of today, which is encoders and decoders. So in this slide, we will be going to know that uh, basically why we need the encoders and decoders, right? So here you can see we have this keyboard here. Here it is our keyboard where we will we are having different kind of keys like p k i enter slash shift right suppose i want to write p u n double e t we know it is puni in english right but computer doesn't know we already know that computer used to understand the binary language only it don't know that what is actually the hindi english right so when i just type puni p u n double e t it will convert the data into the binary format with the help of encoder so this is the basic use of encoder how it will get converted basically to represent each of the values whether it is m whether it is p we have sky values american standard values right for an example if it is a there can be a sky value of 97 i'm giving you an example so encoder will convert that 97 into binary format and that uh, that binary format will go to the processor or computer whatever we can say right and that will be processed then and will we get processed data before the decoder and decoder will convert that data into the human understandable language right so basically what encoder is doing encoder is converting the human understandable data to the machine understandable data which is binary format and again if we talk about decoder what decoder is doing is Decoder is converting the machine understandable data into the human understandable data, right? For an example, if we have this binary format, this is being represented over here that encoder is converting the data into 0, 1 format or, or binary format. And after being processed with the help of processor, uh, we get the processed data here, uh, which is also in the binary format, right? Now the data will be decoded with the help of decoder and we will get the output on the screen. So it is my desktop or you can say the screen where I will be getting my data, which, which the human can understand, right? So this is what the encoders and decoders and why we use it, okay? So let's go and uh, have a look on the encoders, how it works. So basically before moving into the encoders, uh, you already know that why we use the encoder. Because the application part is very important while you are moving ahead with the VLSI industry especially, right? Because without knowing the applications, you would not be able to feel the uh, subject or whatever we are doing right now, right? So you know that why encoder is being used. So now it produces the binary output. We all know that it, it is going to convert it into the binary format and depends on input activated. We'll see how it will work. So basic relation which we have to know between input and output is 2 to the power n into n right for an example here is an example we have n as 2 right so 2 to the power n means 2 to the power 2 which will 4 so 2 to the power 2 cross 2 sorry okay so which means we have 4 inputs and 2 outputs right so these 4 inputs we have y0 y1 y2 y3 right and we are getting these as output a0 and a1 what did it mean actually for an example we have the data as y node, right? What encoder will going to do is, it will going to convert into the binary format, right? So here you can see, we have y node as one, right? We have y node as one. So we have y node as one, which means we have given the data as y node. And we want that encoder should convert it into the binary format, which is a kind of machine understandable language, right? So how it will convert into the binary? We know a1 it will uh, give as 0 and a0 it will give as 0 which means 0 0 means it will give 0 only like we are pressing y0 and the output will be 0 0 right now 
In another case, if I am just giving y0 as 0 and y1 as 1, only I am just pressing y2. You just assume it like I am pressing the things. Here I am just pressing this one, not, uh, not touching these uh, three, right? So in this case, what the output of the encoder will be? Uh, in this case, we can write a1 here and a0 here. From uh, our understanding, we can know that uh, uh, it will convert into the binary. And if we were giving y0 as 1, which means it is uh, the output of it was 0, 0. Now, in the case of y1, which means I am giving 1, which means it will give me 0 and 1, right? So, here we have a1 as 0 and a0 a as 1. Similarly, for uh, pressing the y2, we will be getting the value 1, 0, right? So, 1, 0 will be giving us 2, right? This is uh, how the encoder will going to work. Similarly, for y3, we will be having a0 and a1, both are 1. So, this is how the encoder will going to work. Now, moving ahead with the some other concept for the encoder, which is that what if more than one input got high? In the previous slide, you can see, I was giving y0 as 1, but all other input were 0. If I was giving y1 as 1, so at that time, I was having y0, y2, y3 as 0, right? So at uh, one particular time, I was having one input as i. But in case, the question is that what if more than one input got high? For an example, we got y0 and y1 at the same time got high. So what should be the output at that time? So this is the important topic which is generally asked in the interviews. So here you can see a priority encoder as the name itself saying priority. So here we will be giving the priority to a particular kind of input data, right? So has a priority function which allows it to produce an output corresponding to the highest priority input, which I was saying, right? At least one input should be high, we all know, right? So here we will be using the valid indicator, right? So we'll see what is the functionality of valid indicator here. Now I have uh, given it here that here A7 has the highest priority. Remember this thing. I can give A0 as the higher priority, but in uh, in this case, I have taken A7 as the highest priority. That means whatever the input I will be giving A0, A1, A2, if A7 is pressed, that means the data A7 will be on the output side. Nothing nothing else right so here we have uh, used 8 cross 3 priority encoder you all know that uh, in the previous slide we, we have already seen that how we can just have the number of input and number of output that is 2 to the power n cross n so here we have n is 3 so that means input would be 8 2 to the power 3 so 8 cross 3 priority encoder we will be using so here 8 inputs we are having and 3 output we are getting as y0 y1 y2 we have write it down a7, a6, a5, a4, a3, a2, a1, a0, right? Now, let's take an example. I have used here the word as valid. So, what it means? Basically, valid is something when it is a kind of, you know, on and off switch. If it is off, that means nothing will go ahead and the priority encoder will go into the off situation or off state where it will not work. So, I have given valid as 0 which means it is in the, you can see here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, in all the cases it is 0, 0, and nothing will uh, work, right? But in case of 1, 1, 1, when I have valid as 1, in all the cases I have valid 1, so it, it means that uh, the priority encoder is on now, and we can work on it. So in first case, you can see, when we have A0 as 1, and... Uh, uh, remaining are 0 and we have already seen that a7 is having the highest priority so we'll be moving ahead with the a7 here a7 is 0 that means uh, we should have to check a6 if it is 1 then we need to consider it it is again 0 we should have to move a5 then because we are moving from a7 to a0 because a7 is having the highest priority then from the a7 a6 would be having the highest priority than others then a5 would be having the highest priority than a4 a3 a2 right this is how will be going in the hierarchical manner, right? So here we have checked that uh, everything is 0, that means A0 is 1. That means 0, 0, 0 means A0, right? Now in the next case, we have A7, A6, A5, A, A4, A, A3, A2, A1, A0. Now in this case, we have A0 as 1, right? We'll be starting from A7, 
a7 is 0, a6 is 0, a5 is 0, a4 is 0, a3 is 0, a2 is 0. Now a1 is 1. It will stop here. Right? It will not move to a0. Because the priority of a1 is much higher than a0. So it will not move to a0. Whatever the value is on the a0, it will not consider that. It will consider only a1 now. So the value of a1, uh, the output would be 0, 0, 001. Right, 0, 0, 001 will uh, give the output as a1. Okay. So I have denoted a0 as x. It can be 0, it can be 1. The output would not affect it. Because here we are just considering a1 as the highest priority in this case. Because every remaining bit were 0, a7, a6. Right. Now moving ahead we have a2 as 1. So we, uh, we will not check a1, a0 in this case. It can be 0, 1, 0, 1. Uh, if it is, for an example, if a1 is 1 in this case and a0 is 1, we will not consider them. Because the highest priority in this case would be a2. Right. So we will take the highest priority for a2 now. Whatever the input is there, we will not consider that. So for in this case, the output would be 0, 1, 0. Right. We have just represented it with the help of binary format. Now moving ahead, in this case we have a3 as 1. Similarly, these would not affect it. In the final case, we have just gone through like this and in the final case you can see a7 is high, having the highest priority and it is uh, uh, on the input side, it is 1. That means we do not have to check any other bit. Whether it is 1, 1, 1, 1 or 0, 0, 0, we, uh, it would not affect it because a7 is already having the highest priority. So the priority would be given to a7. So this is how we will be getting the output as 1, 1, 1, right? So this is how the priority encoder works. Basically, here we have the priority already defined for uh, the input bits. And according to that, we have the output on the output side, okay? So let's move ahead. And we are moving with the decoders now, okay? So decoders, as the name itself saying, we have already seen the functionality of decoders. Why we use the decoder to convert the machine understandable language into the human understandable language so uh, processor has already converted our processed data uh, right and it is in the format of binary now that binary data we need into the human understandable language which can be seen on the screen or we can say we want it into the uh, our language okay whatever we want to have the output we want to see it so that is why the decoder is used so decoder will convert that binary data into the human understandable language. So here we have, it converts binary information from n input sig signals to 2 to the power n unique output. So basically it is somehow reverse of uh, encoders, right? So the relation between input and output is n cross 2 to the power n. There we were having 2 to the power n cross n. But in this case we have n cross 2 to the power n, right? So we have taken the example of 2 cross 4 decoder. Right, why I am writing these stuff, you have to remember these things because it is asked in the interviews. Simultaneously, we are preparing for the interviews as well. But uh, uh, after this digital module, we will see that what are the questions is being asked in the interviews for the VLSI. Now in the 2 cross 4, we have 2 as input and 4 as the output, right? So A0 and A1 we are giving as input. Now Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3 we have as the output side. So in this case, for an example, our data is being processed and we are getting 1, 0. Right, 1, 0 we are getting. That means I have already told you that it is being written like this. A1 is here, A0 is here, right. And in case, if we have got 1, 0, so what would be the output? Output should be 0, 1 means 1 should be the uh, decimal format. The 0, 1 represents 1 in the decimal format. That means y1 should be the output. y1 should be 1, right? Remaining y0, y2, y3 should be 0. So you can see we when we have a0 as 1 and a1 as 0, that means we have y1 as 1 and remaining all were 0. So you can see if we were having 0, 0 as a1 and a0, so we were we would we would be having y naught as one, right? Similarly, we have seen this one. Now, in case of a one as one, a naught as zero, that means we are represent we can represent this binary into decimal, which is two. So that means y two should be high now. So y two we have high, and other one is low. Now, in case of a one and a naught as one one, 
we can uh, convert it into the format of decimal we will be getting 3 that means y3 would be high in this case and remaining bits would be 0 a1 i am representing it as d1 and it is representing as d0 so in this case you can see when i am just representing y0 where y0 is 1 so we'll be representing it as d1 bar and into d0 bar right both are 0 0 we have already seen the sop format that whenever we have a 0 as the in, uh, input you can say uh, so we'll be complementing the variable right so here we have complemented it okay similarly we can do for all of the stuff now we are on the important part of decoders which is the active high output and active high enable what it mean actually so we have already seen what is decoder and now we are moving with the active high output and active high enable right active high enable which means we will be having an enable pin here what enable pin will do it will do the same functionality which we were doing with the help of valid pin in the priority encoder right whenever the high enable would go to one we will be getting the output but in case high enable is zero we will not get any output and we can assume that decoder is right now in the off state or it is not on okay so this decoder generally mintums are being generated so in in the case of high output or high uh, enable active high enable we generally have the min terms as the output and output will be produced only when enable input is high so here we have the enable input right the functionality and everything would be same but uh, the addition thing is that e should be added here right you can see the truth table when we have e as 0 that means we can have z anything we can have any data we can uh, assume it 0 we can assume it 1 right it doesn't affect anything but in case when we have e as 111 it means the decoder will start functioning and will be having the data according to the inputs right so similar things will be going here whatever we have done in the previous decoder which was 2 cross 4 without the enable pin so we have 0 0 in this case y naught would be 1 if in case 0 1 which means 0 1 will denote 1 which means y1 would be high and other would 0 uh, similarly a1 a0 10 will represent 2 which means y2 would be high 1 1 which means y3 would be high in this case so we'll be getting these this table right so this is how the active high enable work why we have said active high which means it is working when the the uh, enable pin is high right or we can say it is active only when the enable pin is high we can say this and uh, here we can see why we are saying it as active high output because you can see uh, when we have the data on the output we are just representing it with the help of one right for an example y naught as the output we are getting so we have represented as one similarly if we have y1 as one we will be representing it as one or we can say it is our active high output which means uh, the output would be represented as active only when it is high right high means one okay so this is how we have called it as active high output and active high enable right now moving ahead with the another topic for decoder which is active low output and active low enable it is somehow reverse of that which we have done in the previous slide so you can see this decoder generally uh, considers the max term and uh, or being generated and output will produce only when enable input is low in the previous case we have seen when the input was high only then the output was being produced but in this case the output is being produced only when our enable input is low because you can see here if we have enable input as zero or low so zero would go up here and it is acting like a inverter and this inverter means we will be getting one here which means it will get on right okay so this is how it is working in the similar pattern but we have named it as active low output and active low enable you can see we are getting two inputs a0 and a1 and four output y0 y1 y2 and y3 you can see we have already used enable pin here so in case we have already uh, just defined here that it will work only when the enable input is low 
right in the first case we have enable input as 1 that means if we are getting enable input as 1 after this inverter it will get off so it would not work so we have just done everything as xxx as for uh, the uh, the input will not affect output in case of when enable is 1 which means it in it is in the off state but in case of enable is as 0 which means if it if enable is 0 that means after this inverter it will get 1 right so it will work in case of enable as 0 so we have represented as 0 right now in in these cases the output will get affected according to the inputs so when when we have 0 0 in this case we have seen that it is active low enable which means our enable will get active only when our input is as or we can say the enable is as low right whenever we have the enable as low it is only get active active means it is working right now for active low output it means that the output will be active right we will be getting the output only when we have it is low right so here you can see to represent 0 0 we will not represent 1 as y naught in this case because we have already seen that it is working with the max term or we can say it is working with the pos format right if you have already seen my previous video previous to previous video we have already discussed what is sop and pos so to represent pos we need to have the zero as directly representation and for one it would be a bar right in the pos format actually the variable complement we will be having a bit if it is one so to represent 0 0 that means we have 0 0 as 0 right 0 should be the output so 0 should be the output so it is getting 0 here right because we are denoting it in the format of POS right from here you can understand that active low output that means our output will get active only when any of the variable is low right so here we have variable as low which means it is our output okay Again, in case of 0, 1, which means 0, 1 will represent 1 in the decimal. Y1 should be on the output side. So, we will be getting Y1 as 0. Here you can see in this case only. Right? Again, 1, 0. 1, 0 will represent 2. That means Y2 should be on the output. So, we have Y2 as 0, which should be on the output. Again, uh, the same thing would be A1 and A0. Okay? We will be getting Y3 on the output side. Right? Now moving ahead, this one is important topic in the decoder and can be generally asked or we can say it is actually asked maximum times, right? You can see here, we will be going to design any kind of circuit using the decoders, right? So we can design different circuits using decoder in the following ways. If we have min terms, we will be using OR gate. Min terms, will rep uh, min terms can be represented with the help of SOP, the sum of product, right? And max term can be represented with the help of POS, which is product of sum, right? So for min terms, we will be using the OR gates. For max term, we will be using the AND gates. Now, we have the example here, design full adder circuit using decoder. It is R here, right? We have to design a full adder using only the decoder. We do not have to consider any extra stuff here. And we know we we can use OR gate for the min terms and make for the max term we will be using AND gate. We have already done the adders in the previous video. So for the full adder, we were having the sum expression as this one. Right? A B bar C bar plus A bar B C bar plus A bar B bar C plus A B C. Right? Now sum we are having as the min term. I have taken it as min term because it is our SOP format, sum of product format. So sum of product can be represented in the form of SOP can be represented in the form of min term. So I have write down here the min terms. How I can I how I have write down? So A B bar C bar. What is the value of it? I have already told you in the SOP format. If a variable is directly given, which means it is one. If it get complemented, it will zero, and zero right c bar is given so it will be 0 1 0 0 how i can represent in the decimal it would be 4 so i have write down 4 here now for the second case we have 0 
वन जीरो वॉट इट मीन इट वुड बी टू जीरो वन जीरो कैन बी रिप्रेजेंट इन द डेसिम्बल एज टू सो आई राइट डाउन टू सिमिलरली वन एंड सेवन Similarly, in the case of carry, we have the expression a bar b c, a b bar c, and a b c bar and a b c. So, how I can represent it then in the format of min term because it is also S O P format. S O P means sum of product. So, S O P can be represented in the format of min terms, right? You can all uh, you can also do it with the help of max term as well by doing the complement of these min terms. So, how I can write it uh, or represent it in the well uh, in the terms of min term? so it will be like 0 1 1 1 which means zero, one, one means it is 3 right so we got one min term it would be 1 0 1 what it mean 1 0 1 means 5 1 1 0 which means 6 and 1 1 1 which means 7 so we got these four min terms from here right so we got the min terms for these two now what i have to do we'll see in on the next slide so here you can see we have the circuit design using the decoders now as we have seen in on the previous slide then that whenever we are having the min terms we have to use the or gates now we'll see here we are having this decoder this is our decoder which is 3 cross 8 decoder why i have used 3 cross 8 i will let you know here see you have to check what is the maximum term here it is 7 so 7 is somehow you can say comes under the like under 8 for an example we can use 1 cross 2 to 1 cross 2 decoder we can use right we can use 2 cross 4 decoder right we can use 3 cross 8 decoder right we can use uh, 4 cross 16 decoder right this is how we can use the decoders but in case of this these min terms we can see 7 is the highest So seven can be considered with the help of eight, because it comes under the three cross eight. The eight bit would be sufficient to represent seven, right? So this is how we have used three cross eight. If it was like uh, here we have forty, so we will be going to have the decoder as four cross sixteen, right? But in this case we have maximum value as seven, so we will be representing it with the help of three cross eight decoder, right? So let's remove this one. Okay. So we have y two, y one, and y not as input. So what I'm going to do is we have already seen that whatever the min terms we will be getting, we have to use the OR gate with them. So to represent the sum, I have used this uh, orange color. So this sign is uh, helpful to represent the min term sigma m. We have one, two, four, seven for for representing the sum. So we'll be using this one pin. Second pin, the fourth pin, and the seventh pin would get OR, right? We'll be using OR gate here because these are the min terms we are having. So we'll be uh, we will be using here OR gate, and we'll be getting the sum. Now similarly for carry, we'll be using these black color. So for the black colored pins, we can see here we have three, five, six, seven. So we have taken three, so three will go here. Again we have five, so we'll be representing five. in it and 6 and 7 it is coming from here so we have taken it with the help of another or gate so carry is being generated with with the help of it okay so this is how we can represent our circuit using the decoder right anything you have any kind of uh, expression you have you should have to take out or find out the min terms for that and accordingly you can just connect the pins to the or gate and if it is in the format of pos or max term you can just use here the and gate okay this is how you can design the circuit using the decoder okay so thank you so much for joining us and today we have completed our combinational circuits and uh, we'll be discussing the different things about the sequential circuit from uh, the next video okay after that we will be doing fsm and memories and uh, then our digital electronics would get finished and we'll be starting the linux after that okay so this is how we'll be going uh, forward so thank you so much for joining us and if you are having any kind of doubt you can comment in the comment section and please subscribe to us please like this video and just follow us on instagram as well with the help of @spentern okay so thank you so much for joining us guys